Hello everybody, it's Sally here and welcome to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. I don't quite know where the week goes. Um, hang on a minute, I think I did it on a Wednesday last week, didn't I? Alright, so today I'm thinking about five different ways I use post-it notes in my piano lessons. I don't know about you, but I find post-it notes really, really useful. Um, just because there's always something, isn't there, that's new, that's fresh, that you want to quickly make a note of or and I start to use them. So I've got five things here, let's get going with them. Number one, ah oh yes, okay, so number one is that I will write on to that the, um, the focus of a lesson. So let's say we've got a particular, uh, I've got a pupil who forgets to sit up or hasn't got good posture. So that I will write down on here, um, sitting up straight or posture or check posture or something like that and that will go on to the piano itself so it'll be by the side of the music just to keep that reminder there for him her or me as well okay so that's the first one the second one is very similar and that is that i will write onto a post-it note the learning aspiration in other words the learning goal or outcome aspiration is a nice way of putting it though isn't it because it's aspiring to something rather than having a fixed thing so if the uh, learning aspiration for the lesson, for example, is going to be understanding the pentachord, yeah, do, re, mi, fa, so, then I would have that here uh, to be able to sing a pentachord, a, a pentachord, uh, a pentachord with um, solfa, or it might be to be able to play a pentachord with a good firm tone, whatever it is it would go on to the post-it note and again that would go on to the piano so that it's visible for all to see and I tell you why that's great for me it helps me to keep a hold of what the focus is of the lesson because I don't know about you but it's very easy to get distracted to whatever uh, goes what happens in the lesson what goes right what goes wrong and then you forget oh that was the main focus of my lesson when I've got it there I do it and I keep with it okay so that's your second one let's see what the third one is do, do, do. oh yes okay now this one number three is here's the answer now I mentioned this in the blog post that I wrote last week and if you haven't watched it there or even even read it yet I will put a link to it down below once this is finished and it's posted so I will often write an answer to a question or a number of questions onto a post-it note so the answer might be um, might be a word or two words it might be landmark notes for example and the student would already know what landmarks notes are we've probably been looking at it for the past two or three weeks and without saying anything very much about it again this would be on the piano when they come in and it would just say landmark notes and I would say to them now that's an answer what could a possible question be? And then I would get on with a lesson and let them to let them think about it, maybe coming back to it after about five minutes and have you thought of anything yet that you could you ask a question that that would be the answer for? And it's really good because it shows you their level of learning and their understanding and also their memory about it, the whole thing. So I do love that. So as I said, there's lots more different ideas of ways you can start Things to say at the start of a piano lesson in the blog. I'll put the link later. Right, got to keep moving on. Number four. Oh yes, number four. So number four is rhythm flashcards. I often use post-it notes as kind of temporary rhythm flashcards. So if we've found a rhythm in a piece that is not quite going right, then I grab a flash. Um, I grab a flashcard. I grab a post-it note and I write the rhythm out on it. A bit like this so I take the rhythm and I lift it out of the piece that it's in for example and then we might come away from the piano I might get the pupil to write the rhythm language underneath or the metrical counting or I might get them to even copy it or I might get them using a, a, another post-it note the blank one I might get them to write tap that one through say it through hide it can they write it out again can they go and play that on the piano and at that point I would then go back to where that rhythm is actually in the piece of music that was causing the problem and get them to do the same thing again. It usually sorts out the problem. So rhythm flashcards was number four. And number five, da da da. Okay, here we come. So this one, which won't come off, there we go. This one is being a musical detective. So for this, I might, uh, let's take a song for example that they've learned. So here's the song that goes apple tree, apple tree. Um, and I'd want them to work out what 
the song is that um, I'm referring to here. So I would give them maybe the rhythm of the song on a post-it note, okay? I'd write the rhythm on a post-it note. And then I might actually write the pitch shapes without there being any stave or anything like that, literally just little blobs, okay? So, and if they still hadn't got it, you know, and I'd be encouraging them to work it out, then I might um, actually give them an image of an apple. And you see, I'm encouraging them to think slightly because I've deconstructed, as they say in cooking terms, don't they? Um, so I've deconstructed the song and they're seeing little glimpses of it and they have to construct it back together again in their heads. So that would be the fifth thing I would do is to be a musical detective. And of course you can do that with um, pieces as well, you know, the keys and, and time signatures and things. So we had five ways of using post-it notes in your piano lessons. First is to write it right on a particular focus for the lesson in terms of helping students to remember things. The second was writing on whatever the learning aspiration is, the goal or the focus for the lesson, something maybe new that they're learning. The third thing was, here's the answer. What could a possible question would be? Okay, and it's got to be what could a possible question, not the question, because there could be several, yeah? A possible question always fascinating this one to see what they come up with and the fourth one is to use them as rhythm flashcards and take a tricky rhythm out of a piece and write it on a on a post-it note get away from the piano practice the rhythm then go back to the piece and see if it sold it and the last way is to be a musical detective and to write various clues about a song or a piece on those post-it notes I'm sure that all of you that are watching out there have got lots of your own ideas and lots of favourite ways that you use post-it notes and I'd love you to share them with us so please do drop down below in the comments any ways that you like to use post-it notes because I'd like to learn some new ones as well. Thank you so much for watching and um, I'm going to look forward to seeing you all soon. I'll be back next Tuesday. I can see various people are saying hi to me. I see Katie's there. Hello Katie. Um, have a lovely day, have a lovely teaching time. I'm teaching this afternoon. I shall have to get my post-it notes out and going. Okay, have fun, bye for now.